Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caravallo from ZK Research, and I'm here at CCW24. Uh, right now, I'm at the AWS uh, booth inside um, uh, the, the Expo Hall. Uh, it's actually a really big booth. It is. Uh, I'm here with Mike Wallace, who are the America's Solutions Architect Leader. Uh, what does that job entail, Mike? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I, I've been in the uh, CX business since uh, 1994, very long time. Uh, saw a lot on the evolution, been with uh, AWS for seven and a half years. Wow, so you're uh, right from the beginning. Yeah, uh, yeah, we were still a beta product when I joined. I joined as a solution architect and moved into solution architecture leadership. Uh, my team's responsible for working directly with our customers that are implementing Amazon Connect in the Americas. Yeah, and I find Amazon Connect an interesting product because uh, it doesn't get as much fanfare sometimes as some of the other brands, but it, it's very widely deployed. Uh, tell is. me a little bit of the momentum you've had, uh, how many customers you're up to now, things like that. Yeah, we're, we're over 10,000 customers using Amazon Connect. We process millions of interactions every day using Amazon Connect uh, across you know, the typical channels that you would expect in the contact center. You know, the history started off as an internal project. We brought it to market about when I joined the company. It's been a you know hockey stick curve of growth ever since. And one of the things I like about Connect is you actually broke the myth that cloud platforms couldn't scale to handle the largest contact centers, right? right. And so, yeah. uh, in fact, uh, uh, I think the Amazon used to still the largest customer, but you've got some other really big customers using it, correct? We do. Yeah. Um, customers like DoorDash, Intuit, Capital One, these are you know very large contact centers process, thousands of calls, obviously with thousands of agents, some in the 10,000 plus agent market. Yeah. That's, they're, they're big, they well, process big, a lot. Yeah. yeah. And uh, since we are here, I'd be uh, remiss to not ask you, just thoughts from the show. Anything here catch your eye, things you like? Yeah, it's been great. Obviously, generative AI is, is a topic of uh, conversation for just about everyone. Yeah, it's I'm, really looking, I'm looking around, <laughs> I see a lot of AI, a lot of the yeah. booths. <laughs> it's, it's been really interesting kind of walking around and looking at the booths and see how, seeing how different companies are approaching use cases with generative AI and how they feel they can really help the customer experience. A lot of creative ideas, um, some, some that are expected. You know, we see a lot of interest in virtual agents and analytics, and, and some that are really unexpected. I've seen some really interesting uses of generative AI to, to help with like language translation models and things like that that are really innovative. And I think generative AI is bringing a lot of excitement to a, a kind of a previously maybe a little bit mundane world. It's, it's, it's something new and fun and giving us a lot of excitement to do some yeah. really new things. Yeah, new and fun isn't exactly what we've used yeah. to describe Contact Center before, right? I, so. I think it's fun. I've been doing it a long <laughs> yeah. time, but this is this is definitely innovation at a at a new level. One of the big uh, concerns, I guess, in this industry about Gen AI is that it's going to kill all the agents. Right? Yeah. We're not going to, uh, you know, or at least a lot of the jobs. Uh, as you've talked to your customers about what they're planning, are they actually looking to physically reduce the number of agents, or is it an augmentation, or how are they thinking about that? You know, I think it's it's a little bit dependent on the customer use case. Uh, very, we we did see that early on that people are like, well, you know, is, is this technology potentially disrupting our agents? And the answer to that is no. Uh, what it does is it frees the agents to be a little bit more powerful, right? So we can, we can use generative AI to do those low-hanging fruit interactions that don't require that special human touch. I, I read something the other day I thought was really interesting. It was a quote about how for generative AI to work, it has to have a large sample set of data to make its decisions. What makes the human mind unique is it's able to make decisions based on small data sets. Mm. And it's a, it's a really important differentiator. So when we talk about great uses of generative AI, we're looking at cases where I can make decisions based on data if I have enough of it. Traditional artificial intelligence needed a lot of data that was very linear. Yes. It, it couldn't extrapolate, whereas generative AI, because of the power of the compute behind it, can, can use a much bigger data set and therefore make much more intelligent seam decisions. At the end of the day, it's still a machine, right? The empathy, it's not a thing that machines do. For that, we still need a person. But can I use generative AI to help that person arrive at the right decision, to give them access to information to make those decisions faster and more accurate? You bet. And you know, with, with contact centers, efficient agents that do the right thing the first time are going to help both the contact center efficiency and they're also going to really maximize customer experience. Customers are going to be happier yeah. when they get the right answer the first time and they don't have to call back. Well, that's an interesting aspect of this industry. We've been talking about this holy grail of improving customer experience for years. Yeah. And, and by and large, most brands don't have great experiences, right? So, yeah. uh, you know, something needed to change. I think, I think yeah, I can be that change agent. So let, let's uh, pivot a little bit and talk about Connect specifically. You bet. Um, the innovation momentum around Connect 
to me anyways, as somebody who receives all your press releases, seems like it's increased over the last uh, last couple of years. It and has. so uh, you just recently made a number of announcements, uh, Data Lake Workspace. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, talk about some of the ones you thought were the more notable. Yeah, so here at CCW, we've been talking about uh, uh, two announcements. Uh, one, we refreshed our agent workspace look and feel. Uh, basically makes the agent workspace uh, uh, better viewing for the agent. And happy agents make happy customers. I, I, I've yes, always I, believed that. I think that's true, yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was a, a real refresh in the way it looks, the way it feels, the way it flows, makes the agent a lot more pleasant on the eye. Um, might seem like a small announcement when you really think about it. It's, it's actually a pretty nice thing. Uh, no, Asian work. The, the, yeah. the, the interface is huge. Right? Yeah. So. Um, Data Lake is a really interesting one, you know, and analytics are always something that contact centers have always struggled with. If you go way back in the day when I first started in this, you know, our analytics were what came out on the printer. They just printed directly to paper and the contact center administrator had a piece of paper to look at for reports. Not very powerful. Analytics has progressed obviously a long way, but AI really kind of changes the game with how we view analytics. But getting to that raw data has always been a little bit challenging. You have diverse data sources putting places in different ways, maybe different formats, maybe unstructured, maybe structured, maybe I have to write SQL queries, maybe I have to use special tools. Data Lake takes the complexity of that away. What it does is it takes all the data that we collect in the contact center, all of it, not in segments, not in pieces. It puts it into a centralized, structured environment with zero ETL, so I don't have to do transformation jobs on the data, it makes it queryable right out of the gate. So now the customers that are in the analytics world, like your contact center analysts, your data analytics teams, they can get to that data using commercial tools like Amazon QuickSight or Tableau yeah. or Splunk, and they don't have to go through complex ETL jobs to get to that data. They can get it right there and it's ready to consume. Yeah, and that's it's interesting because that's kind of an under the cover announcement. It is. But it addresses the biggest pain point that customers have told me they have when it comes to evolving their customer experience, and that, that is data. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone's got lots of data, but they have no idea how to bring that data together and then be able to do analytics on it. Yeah, and I mean, data's traditionally been pretty disjointed, right? Even in the contact center, if oh, you yeah. had, if you had <laughs> your contact center service, it was still disjointed data. You would have data from the agent experience, you'd have data from the customer experience, you may have data from uh, additional workflows, workforce management, et cetera, and it was never in the same place, and it may not have even been in the same format. So this takes that complexity away. It also Oftentimes we have customers that want to combine their contact center data from the Amazon Connect universe along with data they may have elsewhere. And this puts it in that SQL queryable format where we can actually take that data and easily combine it with other data into a more holistic customer view. Yeah, and I do uh, caution companies when they're rolling out their AI to get their data house in order first. Um, one of the things, you know, one of the expressions in data science is good data leads to good insights, that's obvious. Mm -hmm. But one of the lesser known points is that silos of data lead to fragmented insights. Absolutely. And that, to me, is really dangerous. Because you, you can have one system telling you one thing and another system telling you a completely different thing. And then that's why these bad experiences occur, because you're getting two different answers from two different people in the same company. So, yeah. yeah. And or so, it leads you to false conclusions. Yeah, and so that's yeah. why I'm glad you guys are focused on that aspect of it. So uh, just uh, uh, you know, one, one last question. What's what's next? Reinvents coming up and some other events. <laughs> what's next for Connect? What can customers expect? Um, you know, we're we're continuing to grow in the generative AI implementations. So you know, it's always really exciting to see what's coming. I don't have any specifics that I can give you, okay. but you know, we're we're obviously always innovating. We're always obviously innovating, as you said, very very quickly, and that pace of innovation just continues to roll forward. So um, always an exciting time. Reinvents a, an exciting week for us all. I always look forward to it. All right, I love so going. you can't give me some specifics. I'll change my last question then. Uh, I do know that uh, AWS does have some production customers using Gen AI. Absolutely. Which uh, I don't find all the time. I, I see far more customers thinking about it than actually putting deployment. So are there, uh, is there a customer example or two you can give to, ex to explain what they did and some of the value they got? Yeah, so I mean, the nice thing about this is it's a customer that's very near and dear to my heart because I like to eat, so DoorDash. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a customer that I think a lot of people have heard of. Door DoorDash has, a very large contact center, tens of thousands of agents. They process a lot of different kinds of contacts. One of, one of the interesting things I found out working with DoorDash is a lot of their contacts into the contact center are actually from their drivers. And for a lot of very predictable, but a myriad of reasons. And that predictability led them to the idea that, you know, because these are predictable types of contacts, can we handle them better using generative AI and disassociate them from an agent interaction? So some of those things, 
during tax season, dashers are always very, they call their drivers dashers, sorry, it's an internal term. The, the dashers are always very interested in how to do their taxes as a contractor to DoorDash. It's, it's a little complicated. So those, those dashers call in looking for help. And oftentimes it's just about forms knowledge articles, things that can be served without involving a human. But they were involving a human in those contacts anyway, which led to a lot of inefficiency. Mm -hmm. Another is simple things like directions to houses, order updates, missing orders, order errors, things like that that the dashers had to call the contact center for. Things that can be handled through generative AI automation. DoorDash did a, a remarkable job of really analyzing their data and saying, we have an opportunity here. So they implemented generative AI to handle a lot of these contacts, and those contact types are on taxes and dasher calls. And through that, they've managed to contain literally thousands of calls every day. They're holding these calls that used to take up to three to five million dollars in costs out of their contact wow. center. Yeah. So, I mean, the return on that's investment... A big, that's a big payback. Yeah, their, their return on investment is absolutely astronomical. And, you know, I give a lot of credit to the DoorDash team. They were very thoughtful in how they pr approached their data, but very aggressive in once they realized that there was an opportunity here. So a really, really great use case. And it's, uh, it's that use case is available publicly. We'd love to share it. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's something we're it. very proud to see. Yeah, yeah, well, if you send me a link, I'll include a link in the YouTube description below. You I'm not sure I'm a fan it. of DoorDash servicing better. My kids already spend <laughs> enough money with that. So now it's just well, going to get worse. I'm the guilty one in my house, <laughs> yeah, so I have so. nothing to say on that matter. <laughs> All right, uh, Mike, you have anything else you want to add? No, just uh, thanks for taking the time with us. We really appreciate you spending time with us as always. And, no, thank uh, you. That was a fantastic discussion. I appreciate thanks. it. Thanks. So, appreciate it. On um, behalf of Mike Wallace from AWS, I'm Zias Caravalla from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button, and I'll uh, make sure I have that link to that DoorDash description. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time in my next episode of Zcast. Thank you. Thanks.